looking at some examples of different populations, different types of populations too in fact, um, and how the distribution of sample means is affected and how we can use a few bits of key knowledge to help us make estimates for certain parameters uh, if we don't know the population parameters. So we're looking at the standardized normality of the sample mean distribution and uh, this keys back to some of our previous work and again the emphasis on this video is not to watch this uh, if you're new to the topic you should watch other videos for that. this is about some examples and looking um, at those behaviors through examples and for any sample size if we look at, if we've got a normal population the sample will all, always be normally distributed but if we have other populations so non-normal populations that aren't normally distributed um, provided our sample size is large we say n is at least 30 um, we can also use a normal, a normal distribution as a way of approximating it. So with a big sample size, we can do that. So it becomes very useful when the population parameters, the mean and standard deviation aren't known. We can use the sample means and the sample standard deviation to estimate that. Even in a non-normal population, provided the sample size is sufficiently large. So 30 is usually that rule of thumb. So the sample mean is distributed normally in a normal, normally distributed population. Okay, so that's that point there which we've seen before, and we can use um, the, we can estimate the um, population's mean by using the sample mean with the symbols given there. There are various sim uh, symbols, as you know, for this of work these are just some of them this the standard deviation of the sample and that gives us sigma over root n as we've seen before so for the non-normal populations in other words uh, other sorts of random variables and the distribution of those um, that have some perhaps unknown mean mu and standard deviation sigma provided the sample size again is large enough the central limit theorem tells us that we can uh, again use the same as above uh, as we did for the normal populations. Okay, so the uh, sample mean is uh, equal to u mu and the uh, sample standard deviation sigma over root n will give you that and remembering that number 30. Let's look at the two examples now. So the time for a customer to be served at a fast food outlet is normally distributed with a mean of 3.5 minutes standard deviation one minute what is the probability that 20 customers can be served in less than one hour so this is a normal a normal distribution okay so the uh, sample will also be normally distributed writing down our information now so we have uh, mu given to us as uh, 3.5 now so these are equivalent as we've said earlier in the video uh, and just showcasing some of the different symbology that you may see okay so the, the um, mean of the sample means okay the expected value of the sample means and that's 3.5 minutes is our unit and the given standard deviation one minute so we've got um, one minute there and so the sample standard deviation for the sample means is that sigma over or sometimes by the way as you saw before it can be written like that okay the other symbols if you wish to use them we've got uh, that sigma over the square root of n from our previous investigations now a few things to um, look at we've got remember the variable here is service time per customer service time per customer is the variable okay it's, it's important to have that clearly in mind and our samples are the customers Okay, 
So on this one here, we've got what's the probability that 20 customers can be served in less than an hour. We need to turn that into a rate of uh, service time per customer. All right, so we can match that. So 20 customers in one hour, and we have, remember we've got minutes up here, so let's convert to minutes. So it's 20 customers, 20 customers per 60 minutes means one customer per 20 minutes. Okay, so that's our service time per customer, and we've got to find the probability of that. Oh, one customer per three minutes, sorry. Dividing by 20, not dividing by three. My apologies there. So we've got one customer per three minutes. That's our service time per customer. So we can look at some specifics now. That would mean we're looking for the probability um, of X sample mean being less than three. Okay, and we, this is a tech active question. Uh, by the way, I didn't calculate the uh, sample mean standard deviation, which is one, because we have a standard deviation given of one minute, and uh, 20 is the sample size. Okay, so it's one over root 20, because our samples are customers, and we have 20 customers. Okay, so that's our rate and service time. So we go to our calculator here, and we uh, we may need to show in some questions what uh, keystrokes or quote the functions we used. Just remember that. I'm just going to show you on the screen instead of writing it. Okay, so we need to add calculator and uh, T Inspire menu probability, and we're looking at a distribution as a normal CDF, and we're looking at less than three, so it's cumulative from uh, negative infinity up to three. Now on this non-CAS calculator, I just have to put a very, um, very small number in there, a, a, a big negative, I suppose you could say, something that's very negative. So negative nine times 10 to the 999, that's pretty small. So that'll be our negative infinity up to uh, three on this one here. And this is not a standard normal distribution, so we need to put the uh, values in for mu and the standard deviation. Okay, 3.5 and 1 over the square root of 20 and hit OK and uh, to three uh, four decimal places 0 0.0127 is the probability 0 0.0127 so that's for a normal distribution what about one that's not normal the mean number of accidents per week at an intersection is 3.2 and the standard deviation is 1.6. This is actually discrete distribution so it is not actually normal. However, applying the central limit theorem we can get by what and come up with a reliable uh, approximation. So what is the probability that the average number of accidents per week at the intersection over a year is less than 2.5? So we need to get our quantities sorted and our units. Now, because it says over a year, and we're looking at accident rate per week, we can say that the basically the samples are the are the weeks. Okay, so we have n equals 52 here, and because we can approximate, that's that's certainly bigger than 30, so we can approximate that with a normal distribution, and so our mean equals sample mean mean of the sample means and basically that's going to be 3.2 um, sigma is given to us as 1.6 so that means we can go the standard deviation of the sample means is going to be uh, 1.6 over the square root of 52 and we go to our calculator again so uh, before we do that, we'll write our probability statement. So um, x is going to got to be less than 2.5. So again, we go to our probability distributions 
normal CDF and like last time we put in the equivalent information 3.2 sorry 3.2 and we have the standard deviation 1.6 over the square root of 52 and we have 0 0.0008 if we take it to four decimal places it's a very small probability there so there's uh, some examples how we can treat uh, normal populations and non-normal populations provided the sample size is big enough um, we can treat them the same way and uh, come up with estimations for parameters and therefore calculate probabilities